well, everyone. Today is a very Provence day. As you can see, I am surrounded by vines because we are indeed in a vineyard. This morning we spent the day in Avignon, which is where we're staying, actually. We hadn't been able to take a stroll around, so we just went to the major touristy points. So we went to the cathedral, then we did the tour of the Pope Palace, which, by the way, if you're coming to Avignon and you have high expectations of a Pope Palace, bring them down a little bit because I thought I would see a bunch of frescoes, a bunch of beautiful art, but there wasn't much there. It was a lot of augmented reality again, just like with the abbey, with the monastery that I went to the other day. But I don't know, I guess I expected to see a lot of regal grand things and there wasn't it. But I have to admit that the palace was invaded during the French Revolution, during the Napoleonic invasions. So they pretty much destroyed and wrecked the place. Only in the 1900s did they manage to actually get it back a little bit into shape and do some restoration. So they haven't had enough time to bring it back to its original glory. But it is a UNESCO landmark, so absolutely essential. And now that we did get the cultural stuff out of the way, we're going to get some wine. So we found this winery called Chateau de la Gardine. They are located in the Chateauneuf du Pape region, which is basically this region here. They are located in a very interesting place because, as you can see here, they have a lot of different soils. So you get very interesting, very varied wines. But let me tell you a little secret. I know nothing about wine, so I'm just pretending. Don't tell anyone. Other than knowing how to hold a glass gracefully, I know nothing about wine. I'll smell it, I'll swirl it around, make a senseless comment here and there. But at the end, I guess what matters is if you like it or not. Even though I knew nothing about wine, I did manage to learn a few things in my time at Chateau de la Gardine. For instance, to find out if a wine is going to age well or not, independent of price point. You can serve it, you'll drink it, but you will leave a little drop at the bottom of your glass. Let that rest for 15 to 20 minutes. And after this time, if that little drop still smells and tastes like wine, it is a winner. The Chateau de la Gardine estate has been established in 1670, so they have been doing wine for quite a long time. The level of quality and attention you get here makes the experience of wine tasting elevated, sophisticated, but never stuffy. You feel very relaxed. The property is also what Provence dreams are made of, with vines as far as the eye can see, gorgeous vistas, the beautiful chateau. We, of course, bought a few bottles for ourselves to bring back to Italy with us, but if you ever visit from a further place, they also have a shipping service, which really comes in handy. Well, that was absolutely lovely. We were hosted by this very nice gentleman called Florent. He is half French, half Italian, so we already bonded over that. But he made sure to explain everything to us. He gave us some amazing wines to taste. The property here is absolutely gorgeous. It's surrounded by vines, but not only that, you can see the Hon River right at the back, the actual manor, the castle itself, the chateau is pretty, pretty beautiful and very Instagrammable. And if you just want to taste some very special wines made with a lot of love, made with care, just an absolutely lovely experience. We felt very at home. I know that drinking wine, especially if you're not a connoisseur, can feel very overwhelming and a little bit intimidating, but they were all very nice. We ended up getting a few bottles, wish we could have bought more, but every single wine we tasted felt like there was a story to tell, felt like it would be a special moment while drinking that wine. So I'm very, very happy. I feel that there are a lot of wineries in the region. So if you feel a little bit like you have too many choices and don't know where to come, 
come here. Absolutely come here. Well, it is another day and it started really, really well. We came to the region of Bahu, where, surprise, surprise, there is another abbey. But it was kind of on our bucket list to come here because not only is the place beautiful, super serene, extremely uplifting as an environment. I mean, look at this. It's also a beautiful mass done in Latin, all chanted. So if you like that, you have got to come here. But we found online that these monks make some really, really good wine. So of course, we had to drop by. We went to their little store, which was freaking phenomenal. They had freshly made bread. The smell of yeast in the air was just divine. They had terrines, they had like little spreads of foie gras, they had beer, they had products for the home. If you need an amazing activity to do like in a Friday morning, I highly, highly recommend it. After a very edifying morning, I had to stuff my belly with a lot of French food. And we stumbled upon one of the best restaurants from the whole trip, highly recommended. It's called L'Entrepot, and the food was just exquisite. A fixed price menu that started with some melon and prosciutto, continued with the butteriest cod, topped with this olive tapenade on a bed of the most delicious vegetable risotto and ended with a brioche filled with macerated figs and caramel ice cream. A sort of out-of-body gastronomic experience that made this day just perfect. You guys, it is our final day in Provence. This is sad. Our trip is coming to an end, but it was a truly delightful one. We are going out for coffee and maybe do a little bit of exploring into the French pharmacy, the iconic French pharmacy before we go, and then just chill out during the day and hit the road tomorrow. If I have time, I'll probably also do a little trip recap with the best and worst, so you guys have an idea of what to do and what not to do when you come here as well. Ooh la la, the French pharmacy. A haven for beauty lovers, it's a must-see whenever you're in the country, whether you feel like you have to go to one or not. Because not only do you get a myriad of local, hard-to-find brands, but the variety of products is unparalleled. A few of my favorites, Avance Cleanser, a no-frills option that will clean your skin without stripping it from its natural oils, very basic, easy product to always have in your cupboard. Bioderma's Micellar Water, this is iconic for a reason. If you like to double cleanse like I do and have sensitive skin, this is a great second step just to get all of the product out. SVR's Ampul Relax, I have mentioned this in a video before. This is such a great, very hydrating under eye serum, which comes in handy when you have been drinking as much champagne as I have. La Roche Posay's Tolerian Fluid is what I wear on my face every morning. The Tolerian line is for sensitive rosacea prone skin. So if you need something that is going to be lightweight, not clog your pores, but at the same time hydrate, replenish, plump your skin, this is amazing. This one might be a little TMI, but if you want to eliminate odors from your underarms, you have to get yourself a glycolic acid toner that will kill the bacteria under your arms, which is what causes those funky smells. Caudalie's Vinyl Perfect is gentle on the skin, but it gets the job done. Might seem a little bougie to just apply this on your underarms, so you can absolutely use it on your face as well. I have been using Swiss brand Coraprox's toothbrushes, I think for over 10 years now. Not only do they come in the cutest colors, but they are very gentle on your teeth. Your gums will thank me later. And also don't forget to stock up on their sunscreens. 
and their travel sized items. They have a bunch. the lower quality in the video but I forgot the camera in the trunk so I'm filming on my iPhone that doesn't matter because we had a blast I feel kind of relaxed but not too much so maybe I need a few extra days just to wind down because we did do a lot of things I would say that my favorite thing of the whole trip was the Abbey in uh, Bahu. That was such a kind of restart, reset experience. So beautiful, calming, tranquil, amazing place, beautiful views. And if you're looking for that peaceful feeling, absolutely go there. Most disappointing place, I would say. Wait, there's a tunnel. We'll be right back. Most disappointing place, and again, I feel like this might be unfair, don't take it personally, but Avignon was... I expected more. Maybe my expectations were too high. Uh, it's also where we stayed, and we stayed at a very touristy place in the city, so maybe we didn't get to see its charm because of where we were staying best food I would say would be that sausage sandwich at the fair in uh, Gord. Oh my god, I should have eaten three. If you're ever in Gord in a Tuesday morning and you're feeling a little hungry, even if it's just 9 a.m., get yourself a sandwich, get yourself a little corn on the cob and thank me later. Worst food and this makes me sad because when you go to France you don't expect to have a bad food. The coffee. I am so spoiled when it comes to coffee. I wasn't even a big coffee drinker before moving to Italy but now if a cappuccino or in their case a cafe au lait isn't made to my expectations and my level of required quality it just makes me grumpy. My poor husband had to put up with me all this trip because I was not eating what I wanted to eat. So yeah, I'll have to make it up for him somehow. A few tips for when you come to Provence. I would say, of course, try and bring extra luggage if you're not coming by car because you will want to buy everything that is made in the Abbeys, you want to buy wine, you want to buy everything that is made with lavender, with all of the spices and local ingredients. It's just a really special place, especially for produce, for locally made things. And I don't think you'll regret buying extra luggage for a trip like this. Also bring a little cardigan, maybe bring a pair of pants. It is hot in summer, but whenever that mistral wind comes around, things can get very chilly very fast. So don't underestimate the power of a nice little cozy cardigan. Oh, and be aware of national or local holidays because things close down. We wanted to go to the supermarket, get ourselves some foie gras, get ourselves some baguettes and everything today was closed. It was a Sunday and apparently a holiday as well. So keep that in mind so you don't miss out on services, restaurants, getting access to these things because it can kind of ruin your plans. And that is it. Those are my two cents about Provence. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Let me know if you've ever been to Provence and you have any tips to share with everyone. This way we can all make the best out of our next adventures in the Provence area. And we'll see each other again next time. Bye-bye.